Today on our 2014 Toyota FJ Cruiser, we're going to show you how to install the Takancha T1 vehicle wiring harness with the four pole flat trailer connector. Part number is 118405. Here you can see what the wiring is going to look like when you get it out of the package. Looks like a little bit of a mess, but don't let it intimidate you. What we're going to have is going to be our yellow wire and our red and brown wire. These are going to go over behind the driver's side taillight housing. The green wire is going to go over behind our passenger side taillight housing. White wire, we're going to go to a body ground point. The red wire here, it's going to be connected to our bulk wire. and We're going to run that up to the battery on the vehicle. That's going to power our modulite box that you find here in the middle. Uh, what that means is that we're not going to be drawing off of any of the circuits on the vehicle to power this, so we're not going to be overloading them. And our box here is then going to convert the signals that we're getting from behind the driver's side and passenger side taillights into a usable signal that's going to come out of our four pole for our trailer lights to run off of. We're also going to have a hardware kit that's going to help us make all the connections we need. Piece of foam pad here in case we need to insulate our box from doing any rattling. And then some detailed instructions to help us get this done. We're going to start here in the rear by taking the five screws right up, going across our threshold plate. We'll just pry up on that from the outside edge. We'll have a couple fasteners that'll pop loose. We'll set that aside. Next, we've got the cover here for our jack stored. Let's take that off, set it aside as well. Then you'll see we've exposed another Phillips head screw here on the driver's side. Let's take that out. And same thing on our passenger side. Now we've got a couple of cargo holds here in the back. Let's take this one out here and the one out on our other side. Now we're going to start working with a screwdriver or a trim panel removal tool right up along, around our outside edge here. We're looking to kind of pop those, again, push pin fasteners out that are in there. You can see right here in that corner, we want to use a little bit of caution because that's where that wash, washer fluid line runs. We just keep working up. Our panel should come out enough there where we get to those connection points behind our tail light. And to make it easier to see in, let's pop our access cover out here and then you should be able to see that wiring. See right in here? Pulling that out allows us to get our hand in there and then we're going to run our wires right up along this edge. Now we can see right over here there's a little gray connection. We want to get that separated. There's a push tab on top. We'll push down on that and then pull rearward. Just like that. And now going behind our panel, we'll run our yellow wire up. Just like that. We're going to go ahead and slide that into where the gray plug came out. I want to push it until we hear a little click and then just give it a good push pull to make sure we've got a good connection there. Then we can plug the other side right into our T connector here. That one's a little easier to operate. Tuck that down over there to the side. Next plug we're going to deal with is going to be our white one right here. You can see that one's also going to have a little push tab that we push in. We do want to keep in mind it faces away from you, so you have to get your finger on the back side to press it. We'll bring our red and brown wire in. That's going to connect into that. Then our other end will go right back in where we pulled that one out of. Push it till it clicks and then I'm going to push pull to make sure it's connected firmly. Now just over here, this is our jack. Just to the left of that, we're going to have a bolt that goes right into our body. It's made for helping hold that jack in place. Let's go ahead and take that out. We're going to use that as our ground point. Now to get to that, we're going to just kind of turn that knob on our jack to the left a little bit. Should be able to lift that right up and out. And we can pass our grand, ground wire in behind our panel, just like our other wires. Place the bolt right through it. And thread it right back into its original location. Back down. 
Now just below that point, there's going to be a black grommet. Let's pull that out, just like a black cap there. We're going to pass our four pole wire in behind our panel. And I'm just going to stick that right down in that hole for now. Put a little bit of extra wire in there. And we'll be able to find that underneath our vehicle. Now it's time to get our box into position. So again, we're just going to pass that in behind our panel here. The only thing we're really not going to have in behind there is going to be our green wire. We're going to leave that out here so we can route it to the passenger side. And we'll look for a good location to get that mounted. It's like right there we've got a nice heavy wire loom. It's secured just above it so we won't have to worry about it moving around too much. We'll be able to use a couple zip ties and we can secure it right off to that. Go one right through that top mounting hole. And then we'll have one that's going to go right around the modulite itself. There you see, it's going to be nice and secure. We won't have to worry about that going anywhere. Just trim off our extra zip ties here. Now just over top of the frame rail here and just outside of it, it's going to be another black grommet. Let's pull that out. Behind there we should find our four pole wire. There we go. The actual four pole itself will be the hardest one to get through there, but we're just pulling on through. We'll have that out here where we can work with it in just a minute. But while we're down here, we're also going to take that bulk black wire and pass that back up through. That way we can connect that to our modulite. Now if we reach in there to that grommet, we'll see our power wires right there. Pull the end of it out. And let's get those two connected. Now to do that, we can use one of our supplied butt connectors. Just strip back the end of our black wire. And maybe take just a little bit more off that red wire. Grab our butt connector, slide it in, get that side crimped down. The other side in, we'll crimp it down. And we can wrap that up with a little bit of tape just to give a vapor barrier there. Now we can pull down on our black wire from the bottom, and just kind of guide that through our hole there. Now any loose wires like this yellow one that we've got here, let's go ahead and get those tidied up. Use one of our provided zip ties. Now we're going to take that grommet or that cap that we removed. Let's just make a small slit in it going to the outside. See there? And then we'll take off just a little bit of that material inside. Just looking for an area large enough for our four pole to pass through and also that 12 volt wire. We'll bring that around our wire and then just push it back in place. All right, that looks good. And then to prevent any fumes or any dirt, moisture, things like that from coming up inside the car, we'll use just a little bit of silicone sealant on it. Now we'll reinstall our jack. Put our small cover back up here in the top. Now we'll pull the band off our green wire, kind of expand it out. The only area we're really worried about right now is just getting it underneath the side panel. It's kind of like that. We'll run it over with those. Then we'll start working our panel back into place. We'll just kind of pop those fasteners back in. And we can put our Phillips screw right back in there. We can put our jack panel back in. Let's get our passenger side panel pulled out here. Also pull this cap off here. The cover. Now we can see the small gray connector right over here that we're going to be separating. It was in the same spot on the driver's side. Again, just like a pick or a screwdriver to press that tab down and then pull out. It's usually the best bet. Pull that over to us a little bit. Now we'll pass our green wire in behind our panel so we can plug that in. The side we pulled out is going to go to the larger side of the plug here. And the smaller side runs over to that connection we just separated. 
Then once it's in there, just make sure you give it a push pull. Make sure you got a good connection. Now we'll get our green wire tucked back in behind our panel here. Again, we just want to make sure it runs under that corner. And once we have it clear of any of the fasteners here on the outside, we'll just start popping those back in. All right, put the screw back in. We'll replace our little access cover. Put that cargo hold back in. Do that both sides. And we can get our threshold pot back into place here. Make sure we keep that wire underneath but clear of the fastener locations. And then we'll put our five screws back in that hold that in place. Now our hitch has a small bracket on it here used to help hold wiring. I'm going to use that. If you don't have it, just secure it around the receiver tube or whatever you want to do there. Turn that off. And then my excess wiring on that four pole. I'm just going to pull that up and try to bundle it up real neatly. I'm just going to zip tie it right to the top of the hitch there. That way it'll be out of any danger. We won't have to worry about it getting hung up on anything. And then if anybody needs to, they can undo just a single zip tie and then get some extra line to run out to their trailer or what have you. Now let's do the same thing for our lower grommet we did to our upper one. This one's rubberized so it's a little bit tougher to cut but just like before we'll bring it up around our wires there get it pop back into place. Let's use a little more of that silicone sealant and get it sealed up. Now let's start running this up towards the front of the vehicle. I've just taped it off to a piece of airline hose we have here. You could use like a coat hanger or a little bit stiffer piece of wire, whatever you had around the house. First thing we do is go right over top of these nice big tubes we've got here. It looks like the fuel filler and vent tube, things like that. And now right off the bat right here, like I said, I'm going to anchor off to this. Give us a good point. We won't have to worry about it pulling against the sealant that we've put in there or pulling out on that junction box we've got inside there. So just secure that off and anytime we use a zip tie we always want to trim that tag end off. Now as we run to the front of the vehicle we're going to avoid any you know really sharp edges, we're going to avoid any moving parts or anything that might cause damage to our wiring. I'm going to run right over the top of the spring mount up here on the top and then just in front of there we'll have a couple brake lines and then also the fuel tank. I want to go over the round pipe above the fuel tank. Right over on an angle like that. And I should see that over on the outside of the gas tank. We're coming right over the side of the fuel tank there. Let's pull it up our slack. See our cable right here. It's going to provide us another anchor point. Then we can go right back inside of that frame room where we can start running along with our brake lines. Now right above that white clip that holds our brake lines in place, there's a little gap. So let's go right over the top of that and keep going forward. We'll come out right up here by the exhaust. Now we want to keep this behind the heat shield. See a heat shield here and heat shield here. Let's keep it in that area, kind of right above our frame, just like that. Then I'm going to run up right through those couple coils in the brake line there. And I'm going to guide this towards the front driver's side of the vehicle. That's where my battery is going to be located. And right here you can see a small bracket that kind of anchors out our brake line there. I'm going to use that for another anchor point. Here you can see where our pull wires come out. We'll just pull that on up. We want to make sure that you get all the slack out. You don't want little coil hanging out down there or anything. So make sure you get all the slack out. Just look at it all the way down through there. Let's take about an extra 12 inches or so and then just snip it off. And we'll take our inline fuse holder here. We're going to cut that at about the 4 o'clock, 4.30 position. Straighten it out and let's strip both ends of that off. While we've got our strippers out, we'll also do the end of that 12 volt black wire. Out of the black wire, let's add a butt connector. We'll crimp it down. 
Then we'll add the longer side of our fuse holder wire into that. And then to the short side, I'm going to add our ring terminal. Take a little bit of tape and we'll wrap up that butt connector. Now you can see the fuse is out of our fuse holder there. We're going to connect that right onto the positive post of our battery. Just remove that stud, or the nut off the stud rather. Just because I think it looks better, I'm going to pass that ring terminal up through that protective cover for our battery. And we're going to have it kind of to where it'll just run right along with it there. Just like that. Place our nut back on there and we can tighten it down. Nice and secure. And then you'll see our cap will just come over there. Cover that up for us. Now we've got some extra wire here. Let's go ahead and bundle this up. Let's bring a couple of our provided zip ties around there. Then I'm going to bring it down and I'm going to zip tie it right to that positive battery cable. That way our fuse holder will be nice and close there. And we're going to have that secured nicely there. Last thing we've got to do is slide our fuse into position. 10 amp provided fuse, that's going to slide right in there. Let's tuck that down out of the way. That way we can get to it when we need it, but we don't have to see it all the time. Trim our zip ties and we can go test it out, make sure it works. Now to test out our wiring, we're going to pull the cap off and we're going to use a test light. Now we're going to ground the test light right off to that bare stud. We want to make sure that that's working. Then we can have our partner in the car turn on our running lights for us, or our tail lights. That should give us a constant signal from our first hole here. That's going to be the brown wire. All right, that's looking good. Now the next one over, that should signal our left blinker. So you're getting a flashing signal there. Now we'll do the right blinker. That should be the one on the far outside. It's our green wire. And now we'll have them stand on the brakes. And that should give us a constant signal from both the brown and from the yellow. All right, perfect. Everything's working as it should. We can be ready to hook up to our trailer, plug in our lights, and we'll know everything's going to work fine. Now with our lights working the way it should, that's going to complete today's installation of the Takancha T1 vehicle wiring harness with the four pole flat trailer connector, part number 118405 on our 2014 Toyota FJ Cruiser.